This lecture will introduce some photographs of the ancient world, just to give you a sense of how of what these places look like that we've seen on, on maps so far. Again, those of you who have been to Israel will have seen a lot of these things already, and hopefully this will kind of whet your appetite to maybe take a trip to the Holy Land at some point and to Egypt as well. Again, as we've talked about so far in our, in our lectures, this is the ancient Near East. There you see this fertile crescent. And in this uh, lecture, or at least these, these slides, we're going to proceed from looking at some photographs from Egypt, look at the Sinai Peninsula, and get up into the Holy Land and have a look at what it would have uh, looked like. Again, here's another photograph, a map showing some of the topography and where some different cities are. And let's start in Egypt. Here are the pyramids in Giza. And as you look at the pyramids, and you kind of can be amazed at, at the sophistication of the architecture from the ancient world, also reflect for a few minutes, and we'll say more about this when we do a, um, a, a, an overview of the entire history of the ancient Near East, but the pyramids were built 20, uh, in the third millennium BC, so almost or pretty close to a thousand years before Abraham, you know, closer to maybe 800 years. But even before Abraham's call, we would have sophisticated civilizations capable of building um, artifacts and monuments such as this. Here's a, uh, a more a picture of, of statues at a temple on the far southern part of the Nile on, in Egypt. These were made during Ramses the second reign. Now, unlike the pyramids, a Ramses is, is about 1,500, 1,400 1500 years after the pyramids were built, and he was a one of the possible kings of the Exodus. So Ramses ruled during the 13th century BC, so a long time after the pyramids were built. But again, you can still see one of the marks of Egyptian culture was their ability to craft things in stone. Here's a satellite photo taking a look at the next area that we're going to investigate, the Sinai Peninsula. This is the area immediately northeast of Egypt on the way to the, to the Promised Land. You can see the Red Sea there on the left. And uh, the Israelites would have crossed somewhere and got into the Sinai Peninsula and went to Mount Sinai. Here's a map that shows uh, several potential routes uh, for the Exodus. Uh, scholars don't agree, uh, necessarily agree on this, but we're going to look at the traditional site for uh, Mount Sinai now. And here is a picture, and you can see how the beauty, the beauty of it, uh, the Jebel Musa, that's Arabic for just Mountain of Moses. This is the traditional location of, of Mount Sinai, located in the Sinai Peninsula. And just look at the, 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 um, the remoteness, uh, how desolate it looks, um, also how beautiful it looks. And right at the base of the Jebel Musa stands to this day St. Catherine's Monastery. Again, there's a tendency to put uh, monasteries and churches and shrines at places that were considered to be holy places, and this would be one of those. And this is, for those of you interested in New Testament textual criticism, one of the earliest uh, codexes, one of the oldest complete books of the New Testament, Codex Sinaiticus, was discovered here at St. Catherine's Monastery. Here's a shot looking down from the top of Mount Sinai, looking down on a chapel, and if you do go to... Egypt or the Holy Land, you can take a tour that um, climbs up pre-dawn up Mount Sinai, so you can be up at the top right when the sun comes up. And imagine being in chapel with the sun rising. It, would be, it is quite breathtaking. Now as we move out of there and into the Sinai proper, look at the uh, desert. This would be in the, the wilderness area that the Israelites would have been wandering around in for 40 years. And you can see immediately why God needed to send quail and manna to feed the people and to bring water out of rocks on occasion. Now throughout the Sinai and other deserts there are an occasional oasis and there's an example of one. The most famous oasis in, in the Sinai Peninsula is Kadesh Barnea. This is, was the area that the Israelites used as a staging ground. The ruins here aren't from the Exodus um, period but this is from a, a later time as you can imagine uh, Nations would, would want to keep a garrison or even a fortification around an important place where you could get water in the desert, such as Kadesh Barnea. Now we're going to come into Palestine proper. Again, just to um, get the visual, here's another map that shows uh, some of the major cities. Here are the longitudinal zones. Again, notice um, where the Dead Sea and the Jordan River are, that valley. It's, it's called the Arabah. 
in Hebrew, and that is one of the lowest places on earth. It's, that, it's a rift valley that goes all the way down into Africa. Uh, again, east of that area would be Moab, Edom, Gilead. Uh, directly west of the Jordan Valley it was, is the central hill country, which is where Israel proper was in the Old Testament times, the Eugene Hills uh, or Ephraim. Notice the Jezreel Valley. We had talked about that earlier. That was the place where you could cut through the hill country from the coastal trade areas to get to the trade route that goes to Mesopotamia. And then, of course, the coastal regions were known as the Shephelah. That is, would be the most fertile area, and that's the place where the Israelites and the Philistines often came into conflict during like the books of Samuel, for example. Again, here's another shot showing the um, topography. Again, central hill country, dominant feature of where Israel and Judah were located. Okay, let's start in the south, uh, the G Judean wilderness, the Negev. Uh, again, another desolate place. This photograph shows some modern, uh, modern Bedou Bedouin encampment here. So we move towards the north, you see the, a typical shot from Israel of uh, hills surrounded by valleys. Now notice on the hills you have examples of terrace, uh, terraces built for terrace farming. Again, if you're going to um, farm on a hill, you need to be able to flatten places out. So they used uh, brick walls and stone walls to, to flatten things out so you can have different flat layers for crops to grow. And then, of course, you could grow things in the valleys as well. Now in the far north, here's a shot of the Galilee, a uh, large valley, the most fertile area in uh, biblical Israel proper. Uh, remains so to this day, but you can see how it's dominated by uh, mountains. Now Dan represents the probably the far, most nor northernmost of the Israelite cities. Um, this is actually our uh, um, remains of what perhaps was Jeroboam the son of Naboth, some high place that he built. If you remember, he put golden calves at Dan and at Bethel that sort of surrounded his kingdom. And here's an example of, 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 of an archaeological discovery that actually um, found something that, that uh, specifically that we found in the scriptures. This was the, the, the worship place that was there at Dan, perhaps the one that had the golden calf on it. A shot of the Jordan River. Just notice that uh, not at all places is the Jordan some massive river like the Mississippi, but often it's, just, it's quite small. Again, the Jordan River essentially separates uh, um, Israel proper from the lands east of um, to the east, such as Moab or Edom or Ammon. Ammon. Uh, the Dead Sea, one of the lowest places on earth, so it has lots of mineral deposits, so maybe this is a picture of Lot's wife, but you can see how those stories uh, came about. This would be near the area of Sodom and Gomorrah, and if you do go to the Dead Sea, you can't actually float. It's because the water has, is such so densely full, full of um, minerals and such, you're able to actually um, float and you won't sink in it. So it's, it, uh, and so here's, the, here's a shot of the Dead Sea. Now looking out towards the Dead Sea, um, across the mountains to Moab. This is a shot like maybe from Jerusalem or whatever. You can, you can see how beautiful it is, but also how isolated and desolate it is. This would be the location in the, in the, the picture in our foreground here. would be where the dead, some of the Dead Sea Scrolls would have been found, which we'll be talking about later. Again, here's another shot of the Judean wilderness, the land east of Jerusalem. 